வணக்கம் இன்ஜுரிஸ் டு ஜோன் டூ த்ரீ அண்ட் ஃபோர் ஆஃப் தி எக்ஸ்டென்சர்ஸ் இன் த ஹேண்ட் ஆர் குவைட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பிகாஸ் இட் இன்வால்வ்ஸ் மெயின்லி ஜோன் த்ரீ விச் இஸ் அன் இன்ஜுரி டு த சென்ட்ரல் ஸ்லிப் இட் குட் பி க்ளோஸ்ட் ஆர் ஓப்பன் பட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் தீஸ் இன்ஜுரிஸ் இஸ் வெரி ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் விச் வி ஷால் சி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ In this video, we shall see the presentation and treatment of Zone 2 extensor injuries, Zone 3 extensor injuries and Zone 4 extensor injuries. Zone 2 injury indicates injury to the extensor tendon on the dorsum of the middle phalangeal region of the finger. These injuries may or may not be associated with skin wounds or skin loss. These injuries over the middle phalanx of the finger are usually from sharp injuries, direct lacerations or sometimes crush injuries as from road traffic accidents or industrial accidents. Anatomically, in this zone, there are two lateral bands and one triangular ligament which can get injured. The important feature is that even if only one lateral band is intact, it can extend the distal interphalangeal joint. So when evaluating these injuries the phalangeal extension should always be tested against resistance we should also look for concomitant injuries like fracture of the middle phalanx the treatment of injuries of the extensor tendon in zone 2 on the finger depends on how much of the tendon substance has been injured if less than 50% of the tendon has been injured the tendon is considered stable and no treatment is necessary only the skin suturing needs to be done if more than 50% of the tendon is injured suturing is necessary in the form of a running 50 polypropylene and a cross stitch of 50 polypropylene it is important to remember that we should avoid shortening of the tendon while doing the suturing as this may result in a loss of range of flexion at the distal interphalangeal joint This suturing of the extensor tendon must be followed up with a static splinting for 6 weeks. Sometimes a pinning can be done of the distal interphalangeal joint as done for mallet finger and this should be retained for 6 weeks. If it is a chronic zone 2 extensor tendon injury on the finger, it can be treated like a chronic mallet finger and SORL reconstruction will be required. Zone 3 extensor injury represents injury to the extensor expansion or apparatus especially the central slip over the dorsal aspect of the proximal interphalangeal joint of the finger this zone contains three important components of the extensor apparatus that is one central slip and two lateral bands the usual patterns of injury are the central slip alone being injured or all the three structures being injured together if the central slip alone is injured the lateral bands will hold the pip joint in extension passively only active extension will not be possible by the lateral bands alone the elson test is the most useful for diagnosing acute central slip disruption alone when the intact central slip is extending the proximal interphalangeal joint the lateral bands are volar word and this causes a slack in the terminal tendon so the distal interphalangeal joint will be free but when the central slip is injured the forces are transmitted through the lateral bands alone and this leads to a tightness of the distal interphalangeal joint when the patient is attempting to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint so there are two components of the elson test first we test the active extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint against resistance and while the patient is extending the proximal interphalangeal joint we check the tone of the distal interphalangeal joint which should be free and flail if the central slip is intact if there is pain and swelling a digital block given before the elson test will be more reliable 
If the examination is either inconsistent or unreliable, we can splint the proximal interphalangeal joint in extension and re-examine after a week when the swelling and pain have subsided and this would be applicable only to closed injuries. Now what is this boutonnier deformity that is so commonly associated with a central slip injury or a zone 3 injury of the extensor in the finger? Injury to the extensor in zone 3 may lead to a boutonnier deformity which is flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint and hyperextension at the distal interphalangeal joint. It may not be immediately evident after injury. Disruption of the central slip first leads to an inability to extend the proximal interphalangeal joint actively while the passive extension is still possible. Normally, the extensor forces are distributed to the central slip and the lateral bands. When the central slip is injured, the central slip retracts and the lateral bands migrate palmarly. So all the forces of the extensors are now acting through the lateral bands on the distal interphalangeal joint and hyperextending it. Meanwhile, lateral bands have shifted palmarly. When they are being pulled, they also act by flexing the proximal interphalangeal joint. We also need to note how the distal interphalangeal joint movements affects the proximal interphalangeal joint. When there is a flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint, it stretches the extensor mechanism on the dorsal aspect. This actually helps the lateral bands to relocate to the dorsal aspect. Since the distal interphalangeal joint flexion is so beneficial, it should not be immobilized when splinting a zone 3 injury of the extensor. On the contrary, patients should be encouraged to move the distal interphalangeal joint actively and passively while bearing the proximal interphalangeal joint immobilization splint, which is otherwise called the boutonnier splint. As far as extensor zone 3 injuries are concerned, they can be a closed injury or an open injury. The closed injury may be in the form of blunt trauma or a dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint where the central slip gets injured. Any closed injury of extensor zone 3 where the central slip is injured may be one of the following types. It could be an avulsion of the tendon with no fracture or avulsion of the tendon with a chip fracture or avulsion with a large bony fragment or associated with a subluxation or a dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint. The treatment of a closed injury is usually conservative as the central slip may be restored without surgical intervention by extension splinting of the proximal interphalangeal joint alone and this is called the boutonnier splint. This splint which keeps the proximal interphalangeal joint alone extended is retained for 6 weeks. It must be followed up by an additional 4 to 6 weeks of night splinting and as we have seen earlier the distal interphalangeal joint should not be immobilized. In fact, the patient is asked to perform active distal interphalangeal joint flexion and extension exercises to keep the lateral bands gliding while wearing the boutonnier splint. However, there are certain indications for surgical management of a closed injury of the central slip. For failed conservative therapy with splints, or if there is a large fragment fracture or associated subluxation or dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint or if the patient is non-compliant for splint application. When a surgical management of a closed injury of the central slip has been planned, the incision that is made can be in the form of a cross finger flap so that a good exposure can be achieved and the flap also will be very safe. The added advantage of this incision is that there will be no overlap between the suture line on the extensor tendon and the skin suture line. After this exposure, the tendon can be dealt with as required and if there is a bone fracture, it can be fixed with either K wires, stainless steel wires or a screw fixation. When considering open injuries, they can be without tendon loss or with tendon loss and skin loss. The central slip that is lacerated 
has a thickness of only about 0.5 millimeters, but it is thicker due to the fibrocartilaginous dorsal plate that is present. This allows a core suture of 4-0 or 5-0 polypropylene and a cross stitch with 5-0 polypropylene. Pinning of the proximal interphalangeal joint and extension with the K-wire is also required. The exposure for the exploration of these injuries are in the form of a lazy Z. The first step when managing an open injury to the central slip is a thorough exploration to look for injury to the lateral bands and the central slip. We then proceed according to whether it has been a clean laceration or it has been with contamination or skin loss or tendon loss. If it has been a clean laceration, the wound is enlarged as shown previously. If the tendon has been lacerated, it is sutured with 4-0 proline and cross stitch with 5-0 polypropylene. If it has been avulsed, it is reinserted into the middle phalanx with a pull-out suture or a bone anchor. If on the other hand there has been a contamination, a thorough debridement is required and it needs to be planned whether primary or delayed primary repair needs to be done. And this will be decided based on the amount of contamination and the status of the wound after debridement. If there has been an associated skin loss, immediate reconstruction must be done. This can be in the form of local random pattern flaps like a rotation flap, reversed cross finger flaps or flaps from the dorsal metacarpal artery system like this quaba flap. If there is a tendon loss, the reconstruction of this tendon can be either immediate or delayed after skin cover has been given. The reconstruction of the gap in the central slip can be done by the technique described by Snow where a retrograde flap of tendon is used or a portion of the lateral slips can be used as in the technique described by Yash or a thin tendon graft can be taken which is inserted into the base of the middle phalanx through drill holes and sutured to the proximal end of the central slip in the form of figure of 8. If there is an associated fracture, if the fragment is large, a pin or screw can be used to fix the fragment directly or if the fragment is small, it may be excised and the tendon reinserted into the middle phalanx with a bone anchor or a pull-out suture. This pinning of the proximal interphalangeal joint should be maintained for a minimum of 5 to 6 weeks and followed up for a further 4 weeks of night splinting. An injury to the extensor apparatus over the dorsal aspect of the proximal phalangeal region of the finger is called zone 4 injury. In this zone, the extensor tendon is quite wide as it includes the extensor expansion and it is draped over the dorsal convex surface of the proximal phalanx bone. Due to the wide structure, partial lacerations are more common and hence to diagnose a problem in the extensor tendon, the extension, to, the extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint must be examined against resistance and a surgical inspection is necessary to confirm the extent of the involvement. Injuries to the extensor tendon in zone 4 are often associated with fractures of the proximal phalanx. The treatment of extensor tendon injuries in zone 4 depends on the extent of involvement. If less than 50% of the tendon has been injured or those in which the proximal interphalangeal joint active extension is preserved, conservative management that is range of motion exercises after the skin laceration has healed. If more than 50% of the tendon has been injured, repair needs to be done with core sutures using 4-0 or 5-0 proline augmented with cross stitch on the dorsal surface. If there is an underlying fracture of the proximal phalanx bone, it must be fixed. The follow-up is similar to zone 3 injuries and the proximal interphalangeal joint should be splinted in extension for 4 to 6 weeks while the distal interphalangeal joint is exercised. Since the extensor tendon is so closely applied over the surface of the bone in this zone, the chances of additions to the proximal phalanx are very high. To prevent the additions forming, 
dynamic splinting can be considered in this zone alone. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about the other extensor injuries and the zones of extensor injury. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery and trauma surgery. Panakkam.